Well, let's talk to our next guest, former England player Leanna Sanderson, who joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. The morning after the night before, the, well, the morning before. It could have been so much more fun. We could be celebrating. We have our England flags out and, and enjoying it all. As it is, England lost, but yeah, and they lost to the better team on the day, no doubt at all. But how significant, how important has it been for women's football for our girls to get that far in the tournament? Yeah, good morning, Julia. I think, obviously, we did the game yesterday live on Talk Sport, and I certainly feel, being a former Lioness myself, extreme pride, but really gutted for that result. I think yeah. I genuinely felt like we were going to win. You know, a lot of people come up to me on the street and they're like, Leanne, because we won the Euros, are we going to win the World Cup? And I'm like, it doesn't work like that. You know, you throw in the likes of USA, Canada, Brazil, but they went out of the tournament pr way earlier than people expected, and the pathway was clear for us. So yeah. it's all about a pride, but this one will hurt for like weeks, months, and possibly years, you know, not to be dramatic, but that's what it feels like when you lose a game of this magnitude, but extreme pride for this Lionesses and what they've done for this country in the last year or so, winning yeah. the European Championship. Absolutely, and it has been a game changer for, for girls' sport as well as women's sport, hasn't it? Inspiring a whole generation of youngsters who just haven't had heroes God, I couldn't have named a woman footballer when I was a kid. It wasn't even on the agenda. It was just, there was football, and that automatically meant it was men. And this is going to change things, isn't it? As young girls, they're going to be insisting on playing it at, at, uh, at school. They're going to be in the local community clubs. And we're going to see a whole new generation come through. Yeah, we are. And myself growing up, you know, I only really had Serena and Venus Williams to look up to and David Beckham. Yeah. And they weren't even in, in football. Yeah. It was almost like, but the thing is, the quality's always been there. I think the players are also quite fortunate that all media outlets pressed the green light on women's football in the last year and a half yeah. because... We used to have one game a year on the television, and that was the FA Cup final. So the visibility, the TV rights, the radio rights, along with the Lionesses' win, has been absolutely brilliant. Almost perfect timing. All the games are on TV, you know, the WSL. So I think this Lionesses team have certainly done the nation proud. They're not just on the back pages, they're on the front pages. And I think yeah. for not even just young girls, but young boys now, walk down the street, you know, in an Alessia Russo shirt. Those types yeah. of things to happen. Not even five years ago, but a couple of years ago, that wasn't happening. No, exactly. And don't you love it? Look, I me, mean, I've got I've got a teenage daughter. I love the fact that that she's got you know fantastic young women to look up to who aren't just. I mean, not my daughter will be into those sort of people, but you know, with the fake eyelashes and the fake boobs, dating some guy on Hollyoaks, and that's why they're famous. No, these are women who've actually done something. They look bloody fantastic as well. Normal, healthy bodies, um, and and they they they're striving and they're working hard and they're achieving something you know good role models for young girls yeah, they are. And I think the visibility is everything and seeing yeah. is believing. If you think you can see somebody that looks like you and is like you, then you can aspire to be them. Same yeah. with broadcasting. So I think there's more women obviously involved in the sport now as well. And it's about picking the right person for the job, not just because you're a woman and not because you're female. Yeah. So you know, the Lionesses are great role models for everybody. And when they come home, you know, I was looking forward to going to the victory parade yeah. tomorrow in Square reporting from there. It's not meant to be. But hopefully when they land, I'm sure they'll land to stand innovations and everybody being there absolutely what do you make of this attempt to stir up a race row I and mean, this came up before the euros oh that this isn't a ethnically representative um uh, uh team all these there was one commentator on sky news yesterday talking about how this is full of you know white blonde haired women it's not representative of the nation what do you make of that yeah i mean obviously it's clearly obvious it's a problem but it's not the it's coach's a problem? problem it is a problem but it's not the coach's problem you know, it's a problem that's been there for a few years. How you can have a team that have only two players in it and you look at our league, there's no representation. So the problem is there. What's, but it's what is it? what's stopping um, black or, or Asian women coming through, which isn't stopping particularly black male players coming through? I don't know the answer to that. But what I do know is when I was playing, there was never an issue. You know, it was never where I looked around. There was myself, Rachel Yankee, Anita Asante, Alex Scott. The list could go on. But in the last three or four years, we're not seeing players come through at that grassroots level. So I'm working behind the scenes, don't worry about that, mm. for things to change. But it's not the coaches for And I don't think those types of questions should be asked to Serena Viedman because she's only been in the job for a couple of years. So it's clearly a problem. She's because... picking the best women for the team. Yeah, she is right now, but there needs to be a more pool of players that are more diverse. And it's not because of the colour of our skin, it's because we're good enough. So there's clearly a problem because it, it doesn't happen on the USA team, doesn't happen on other teams, but it happens on our team. So hopefully we'll, see, we'll start to see other okay. players 
coming through the system. Okay, that's interesting. Um, let me ask you also finally about you know what, what you know what rewards the women are going to get. You know, again, if they'd won, you know, there's talk of honours. There was some nonsense. I'm not a fan of this, even for the men. Really, you know, a, a, an extra bank holiday, uh, you know, a big prize money, a hundred thousand bonus, and then sponsorship. But there's still going to be a lot more money in the game, not just in the game itself, but also for these women who are going to be you know getting sponsorship and getting deals. This is when the payday comes. Yeah, and I think, you know, it has definitely got better. I think sometimes with these things, everybody constantly talks about equal pay. I think you have to be realistic. I think we absolutely deserve the bonuses that we should be getting. But to say that at this moment in time, players should be getting 350 grand a week, the same as the men, I'm not quite not sure. Not going to happen. Yeah. We, I think it can get to that point because we're seeing during this tournament, you know, if the Lionesses won yesterday, there was rumours they were going to get 270000 each. When I played and I only retired three years ago, that would probably take about 10 years yeah. for a Lioness to... to so to things are definitely going in the right direction. We'll have to leave it there. Leanne Sanderson, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, she's former England player, of course.